Thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. So I've done many things on this channel. I've built and tested engines. We've done a lot of electrical work. I've done a lot of painting. And today I want to talk about how to protect paint. Specifically, we're going to apply ceramic coatings. Now, whether you have a new vehicle or an old vehicle, you still have to take care of it. And taking care of the paint is not very easy. The paint has to be cleaned, which means all the contaminants in the surface have to be removed. The surface has to be prepped. And then you have to apply some sort of coating, whether it's a wax or a ceramic coating like we're going to do in this video. That way, it will last for many years and you'll have no problem maintaining it. The difference between waxes and ceramic coatings is, is pretty substantial. Waxes, natural waxes like paraffin wax or waxes made with carnauba oils are a material that you put on the surface of the vehicle and it's going to sit on the surface and it will rub off or it will wear off. It's not bonded to the surface. Whereas the ceramic coatings are engineered to actually chemically stick to the surface of the paint. Fill in the micro particles, it's a nano product, which means the particles are very small or the molecules of the ceramic coating are very small. They get into the surface of the paint, chemically etch in there, and they last a lot longer. They produce a better shine and they are much easier to maintain. Both wax and ceramic coatings are hydrophobic. Now as a definition, hydrophobic means fear of water. Now, your car is not afraid of water, but it repels water. And the reason it repels water is the hydrostatic or the static lack of molecules, uh, lack of static in the molecules of ceramic coating, cause it to repel water. They're, the um, atoms are not attracted like static, static cling. They're actually opposite or the same charge so that the surface of a ceramic coating and some waxes will repel water naturally. This kind of phenomenon happens in nature when you see leaves. Leaves have a hydrophobic coating on it so water will beat up and run right off. I'm going to be applying this ceramic coating to my brand new Audi Q5 and even though it's brand new, the paint is still filthy. This vehicle is the finest of German engineering, but it was assembled way down in Mexico. That means it had to travel thousands of miles by train and truck to get to me with only limited dealer preparation. These are the steps I'm going to follow to make sure the paint is perfectly clean. First, I'm going to wash it with a nice pH neutral shampoo and dry it with a microfiber towel. Then I'm gonna remove all the iron particles from the surface, rinse it and dry it. Then I'm gonna clean the surface again using a shampoo and a clay bar to get all of the microparticles off the surface. Then I'm going to remove all of the remaining oils and contaminants with an IPA or isopropyl alcohol wipe. Once that is all done, you have to inspect the surface very closely to see if there's anything left over and clean it off one last time to make sure it's absolutely clean for the ceramic coating. Now, if you're going to tackle this job yourself, and you absolutely can do it yourself, there's one thing you've got to have a lot of, a lot of time. This job I'm doing in this video, I started around 10 o'clock in the morning, and I really didn't finish until about 3.30. Now, the first rule when doing anything to the paint of your car is do not do it in direct sunlight. Make sure you're doing it in the shade, because the sun is going to heat up the surface and anything you put on there will dry quickly and when you move it around with a towel or by hand it's going to scratch the paint. So avoid the sun, do it in the shade. The next thing is to use quality products. I looked at many different ceramic coatings before I was lucky enough to get a sample packet from Avalon King to apply. Um, ceramic coatings can come in a wide variety of prices. They're not too expensive, maybe from 50 bucks to maybe 120 in that range, depending on how much it comes in the package. And there's a wide variety of types the way they cure. Some of them you can spray on and just wipe it off. Uh, some of them actually have to be cured with ultraviolet lights. Uh, some of them have to be uh, wiped up like this one. You wipe it on, it has to cure for 48 hours before you can get it wet, and within seven days you can go through a car wash. That's the majority of them. Uh, most of the professional ones are that way. Um, and some of them, uh, when you apply them, they actually have uh, just dry immediately, which are the cheaper ones. So there's a wide variety, but today we're going to apply the one from Avalon King. If you're looking around for a product to use, I'll put a link to this Avalon King in the description of the video so you can look at that. Their website has a lot of the products you're going to need to do the job right. 
First, I'm gonna wash the vehicle from top to bottom using a two bucket method. That means you use soap and shampoo with water in one bucket, wash it, and after you wash the vehicle, you rinse the mitt or rinse your towel in another bucket with clean water. That way you take all the dirt off the mitt and you don't end up scratching the paint. After that, I'm gonna do a plastic bag test. Take a plastic bag and wipe it across the surface of the paint and you'll feel the drag. It feels like sandpaper. That means the surface is not clean. The vehicle looked clean before I washed it, but this is what the rinse bucket looked like after I was finished. Next, we are going to remove the iron from the surface of the paint. And why are we gonna do that? First of all, I check the water. Go to your any, any store and get yourself a, a water testing kit. I tested my water and these are the test strips and I'll try and show these to you. The, this is the results tab and when I compare these colors right here for the pH, I find out that my pH, uh, total water hardness, the water is pretty hard, which means there's iron in it. Uh, the alkalinity is middle of the road, uh, and the pH is a little bit on the lower side, so the pH isn't too bad. But these other two tests here, I find that my total iron in the, in the water, um, total iron on the bottom there, when I compare the colors, Total iron is about roughly 0.5 and copper is about 0.6. That means there's iron in the water. And you don't want the iron on the surface because obviously iron rusts. Not only is there iron in the water, but iron collects on the surface of your vehicle just from driving down the road. All the cars are driving, the brake dust gets on your car, and the brake dust that comes from the calipers and from the uh, brake pads, and there's iron in that. So we're gonna remove the iron from the surface using a product called Iron X. Iron X is pretty easy to apply. It comes with a bottle, spray bottle. You just spray it on the entire surface of the vehicle and let it set. And as it sets, it's going to run off, and it has a purplish runoff in the water. That's no big deal. But you spray it on the surface, and it's going to release all of that iron from the surface. After about 20 minutes, you simply rinse it off. And then I'm going to repeat the plastic bag test to find out that there's still some particles left on the surface of the paint. Now the last step to make sure I get all those contaminants off the surface, I'm going to rewash it with the shampoo, but this time I'm going to use a clay bar, using a clay bar to rub over the surface. That way it's going to remove any of the nubs that are on the surface of the paint, any little contaminants, anything that's left. And you can see by this picture, when you just have water on there, you can see the little spots where there are things holding the water back. That's where you have little particles that need to be removed from the surface of the paint before you can apply the ceramic coating. You have to be a little more careful on this step. You have to wet the vehicle down and put a lot of soap on it. And this time you take the clay bar and you rub it across the surface and keep it moving. Do not stop with the clay bar because the clay bar will leave a mark. It'll leave a little clay mark. Keep it moving and make sure you go over every square inch of the vehicle using the soap and the shampoo and the water as lubricant. Do not let it get dry. Keep it well lubricated and clay bar the entire vehicle. Repeat the plastic bag test and you'll find that the surface doesn't feel like sandpaper anymore. It might feel slightly grainy, but we're going to get rid of that with the next step. The last and final step is an IPA or isopropyl alcohol wipe down. Wipe down the entire surface. Use a brand new microfiber towel and lots and lots of lighting. Use a flashlight in one hand while you're cleaning with the other hand to clean every square inch and make sure there is no residue from the clay bar or anything left behind. The surface has to be absolutely clean. When it's 100% clean after inspection, it's ready for the ceramic coating. Now the product I'm gonna be applying on here, the ceramic coating is made by Avalon King. It is the Armor Shield IX in Roman numerals or Armor Shield 9. The kit comes with a bunch of stuff. It comes with rubber gloves, which I'm gonna put on before I put the coating on the surface. It comes with a microfiber tile to wipe off. It comes with an application sponge with the cloth you put over the sponge. And of course, the ceramic coating. This little bottle is enough to do two vehicles, but you have to make sure you shake it up vigorously and it has to be completely shaken before you apply it. Good thing I'm doing this on a Friday. When you apply the ceramic coating, you just put a couple drops on your application pad and work in small sections, small panels, no bigger than two feet by two feet. Wipe it all in one direction and then wipe it 90 degrees to that direction to make sure you're getting full coverage. 
Look at it very closely to make sure you have full coverage. It's very difficult to see on a white vehicle, but you have to make sure you have full coverage. I'm moving on to another panel just to get two panels coated. And then once that haze is over, which could be about three minutes or four minutes, depending on the temperature, you come back with a clean microfiber towel and polish it all off and look very closely to make sure you get all of it off. You cannot leave anything behind. Continue working in small panels around the entire vehicle and if you overlap in the middle of a panel Look very closely to make sure you have it even and wipe that clean work very deliberately and by deliberately I mean pick a panel and do that panel or I did all four wheel wells at the same time after I was finished with the entire vehicle I went around it again with two microfiber towels using the sunlight so I can look at the reflection to make sure I got all of the remaining ceramic coating off of there so there was no haze left behind. If you leave that haze, it'll cause streaking and it will not look right. And since it's a hydrophobic coating, I put it on all the glass, lights, and reflectors. That's the great thing about ceramic coating. It's not just limited to automotive applications. You can apply it on windows, mirrors, shower doors. I, I cleaned my shower doors and I applied this coating to that and the soap and the water just sheets right off of there. This stuff works awesome in many different applications. Now one last test, the bag test. Silky smooth, silk. If you plan a day to do this and you take your time, you can really get professional results and save a lot of money. I hope that helps you out. Thanks to Avalon King for the samples and thanks for stopping by Pete's Garage. <music>